good morning everybody how are you doing today okay uh, my name is vishnu i am part of tata communications i have been with uh, tata for about 4 years now uh, i run the uh, security uh, cloud and security i am part of that group right so a lot of the security engineering platforms that we are building tata communications is part of my portfolio i'll keep that brief uh, so that we can get into the meat of why you guys are here right i'll get into the talk uh so first thing a uh, little bit of a hand show i i think uh, get a little more energy into this room so how many of you are actually into cloud native here born in the cloud cloud native okay there's a few hands there how many are of you are moving into cloud native from let's say traditional cloud okay i think there's a few how many of you are here just because your friends brought you here <laughs> you have no clue why you're here right okay all right hope you hope you enjoy the sessions upcoming sessions fantastic panel discussion i think i was uh, picked up a few bits from the guys here so thank you guys for that so uh, what is this cloud native push all about right uh, we we talk a lot about cloud native in the context of that we are talking kubernetes but primarily i think there is a fundamental change in the way we work in the way we we live right in in the way which countries are evolving in which the way businesses are evolving right there's a lot of digitization happening in the world previously technology used to touch you somewhere right some part maybe it was the office right but now technology is touching you in every aspect of life right you got your phones right you got your mobile phones and basically that's in some sense your life these days right suddenly you miss your mobile phone you don't know what to do right because the technology is in it it's enabled you whether it's your bank whether it's shopping right whether it is lifestyle right with cinema whatever it is right you've got everything out there and basically your life revolves around that and technology is enabling you and the technology that is enabling it is now right now in the cloud or cloud native or as we go into the future right it's also going to get into the edge right what is the definition of edge i don't want to go there right i mean there is a lot of different edges people can talk about but this is the way things are going right so let's um, get into this cloud native push right the need for cloud native push right so i started my career maybe a little more than 20 years ago right i started my career as a software programmer right and when i began the software programming right it used to be client server right uh, we used to have a simple database out there right uh, maybe it was microsoft access sql whatever right mm -hmm. and then you had a, a layer right somewhere around it be about it above it right which you would call as a back end service right uh, and then you used to have a front end right uh, again it could be java it could be c c++ uh, we used to do xmotif those days um there were things around i don't know how many of you in the room know right we used to do com dcom corba rpc uh, xml or rpc so uh, different things right over the years right things as they evolved right but the way for us to be able to take uh, and consume the service get data from the service interact with the service right and be able to show something that is productive and value for somebody right so we used to do all of that which was primarily what you call as thing doesn't work uh, monolithic architecture no 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 the laser pointer okay which is what you call there as a monolithic ar architecture right single simple stuff used to work for what it used to do but the moment you started thinking about upgrades uh, scale right uh, how do i make sure there is some kind of access control how do i bring security how do i continue to maintain it because what you build is not its life doesn't end now right it's sometimes the life is a long time and uh, you kind of get stuck in all of these right you're tr struggling to figure out how do i release quicker there is things that customers are asking for us right but we are not able to deliver fast because you're now dependent on some other team there's a db team that will tell me that hey i need this much amount of time there is somebody back end team will tell hey, i need so much more time i've got these cycles to go through so it starts kind of getting slower it 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 felt okay when we began right but then it starts to become slower and slower and then the pace at which our lives are changing right and the way which technology is changing right that was no longer good enough right so then you kind of had this rise in the cloud right you had a lot of folks that said okay i'll deploy this somewhere 
I mean, not yet public cloud, right? But somewhere out there, right? Where basically I will run the platforms for you. I will give you the services for you, right? You can access it, and then you build maybe other applications on top, right? And I don't know. Um, we used to have something called as in somewhere in the 2005 to 2010 time frame, I think, right? We used to call service-oriented architecture, right? You build services, right? And, and figure those services will give you something and then they can scale rather than get stuck in this monolithic piece, right? And somewhere, I think, in uh, uh, coding language, right? From that SOA, there was a fork, right? You got into microservices, which is what is kind of shown here. But then what happened is, as we started building those clouds, right, those clouds started becoming a little more intelligent, right? They started building, again, they started giving you security inherently, right? It started off for scale, right? Resilience, availability, all that stuff. But then it started giving you a lot of uh, security parts. It started giving you RBAC, access, right? And then in parallel, you had this explosion of open source, right? Now, when that open source explosion started happening, right, all the names that folks took here, right, just now you heard a lot of these open source forum pieces, right? Uh, as that happened, right, you suddenly had a lot of, let's say, whether it's the databases, whether it's messaging frameworks, whether it is SSO, right? You had a lot of these things come inherently into the platform, right? The cloud platform also started becoming more intelligent. And so basically what you needed is, hey, I need to be able to run applications, right? And so again, the aspect around application lifecycle management, right? How does that work? How does that scale? Uh, what type of telemetry am I looking at? What is the observability that I can get it? What is the monitoring I can get it? And more importantly, what the businesses really liked was that now I could get somebody to pay for something that they are using, right? Pay per use, right? So that came in, and so that really exploded the aspect. The business thing came in, and so now you had a pay per use, right, where I could on demand consume services from a platform and just, let's say, build applications, right? So this, again, right, I, I'm not saying that maybe startups didn't exit prior to that, right? But then this really helped, let's say, startups, right, come into a ready-made ecosystem, right, which is where it started becoming cloud native, right? Now, why do you want to get into startups? You're trying to solve a problem. You want, you're seeing a pattern, a problem that is not solved today or could be solved better, but then you only have a small window, right, to get it done. Right, because somebody else could come in, right? Or in some sense, somebody could be a very fast follower as well, right? And get it done better than you, right? Once the idea hits the market. So you needed speed, right? So you started getting all this agile. Okay. Okay, cool. So you started getting all this agile development by necessity. Right? You started getting all of that to get to the market quickly. I mean, this is more on the software development, but then this inherently got you the velocity to get your service or product out of the market, right? So this is where we are, right? Where basically we are spinning up in the cloud, right? In the cloud only, right? And that's basically this cloud native part that we are. And in that cloud native journey, obviously, right, you have all these things, Kubernetes, containers, Dockers, right? I remember initially there used to be something called Rocket. I don't know where it went. But you had all this here, right? Uh, containers. Uh, pods, the ability to spin up quickly, on demand, on scale, based on metrics that are getting gathered, and delivering service f services for you at speed and to the users that really need it, right? So that's basically this whole journey of cloud native. Cloud native obviously is all right now a lot of in containers. You build microservices, right? Just something that does what it is supposed to do, right? Have interfaces, right? To make sure that somebody can talk to it, right? Primarily, I would say REST today, right? And then basically talk to each other, get, get stuff done, and go back to the user, right? And one other interesting thing that happened in this all, all of this is multi-cloud, right? So a single cloud is not enough. Initially, it was about one cloud, right? Or it's one public cloud, et cetera. But what enterprises and businesses have uh, basically realized is the myth that the cloud will reduce costs for me got busted. Right? Suddenly you thought, oh, pay per use is great. I will only pay for what I want to use. But then you end up running something out there in the cloud. You forget about it. You're screwed. Right? So you basically got to a point where you are now the cost did not go down. It was a, it was it looked like it would, but it didn't. Right? So then you started looking. Okay, how do I bring in that? Oh no no, I would like certain services, 
especially like banks, right? Or maybe due to data restrictions, right? Or due to security restrictions. There are certain things that will not go out of my data center, my private cloud, right? But there could be others that could reside in the public cloud and maybe some other cloud, right? Which could be a SaaS cloud somewhere else, right? I'm okay with the SaaS cloud, I'm okay with the public cloud, but maybe I still need a private cloud, right? So then the era of multi-clouds came in, right? Now, which is where, again, right, if you've got multi-clouds, how do you orchestrate across multi-clouds? How do I move workloads across these clouds as needed, right? How do I make sure it is secure? Uh, how, how do I make sure it is scaling based on the geographies sometimes, right? How do I make sure that latencies are taken care, right? So there's a lot of other things that started coming, but this is, again, purely, I would say, right, the cloud-native journey, and basically uh, companies embracing how to use the clouds in a very effective manner for their businesses, et cetera, to run productively, right? And the beautiful thing about cloud native is it's constantly evolving, right? It is not stagnant, right? I mean, what technologies you have today, right, would obviously be obsolete in a while, right? But then this part around what is that next-gen technology, I mean, if it's open source or whatever it is, right, it's easily coming in, right? And there's a lot of people out there, right, in the open source community that's developing stuff for the future, making sure you have better tools, you have better uh, packages that can come in and address, let's say, problems that are not solvable today, or it is solved in an inefficient manner today, right? So you're kind of bringing all that. So there is, uh, just take away one thing, right? There is a genuine need, right? If you're, if you are uh, starting something or if you're building something new, right, cloud native could be a very, very attractive proposition for you because you've got a lot of frameworks that are working today. Okay, next. So I covered a bit of this while I was talking, right, but then in the world that we live in today, right, there are few things, right, which are basically uh, business imperatives, which businesses need to succeed, thrive, right, and in the context of those business imperatives is where technology comes in, right? Technology solves a problem for somebody in a certain manner, right? So you got to figure out what works best for you, right? Some of the panelists were saying, right, don't just go blindly pick it up, right? It may not be actually right for you, right? See whether it is actually appropriate. See whether even Kubernetes is actually appropriate for you. Look for that and then say, okay, I will adopt it, right? Uh, you, you get stuck with something because somebody else was telling you, again, uh, you, you got to figure out how to uh, uh, get out of that hole, right? So there's technologies that are available for you, and some of it is basically also looking at, is it future ready? Does the problem solve what I have today? Does it have a little bit of a life for the future? Right? And can it continue to solve, let's say, certain problems for me? Because each of this right, has a capital expenditure, there's got an operational expenditure, right? In the context of businesses that run it, right? Everything has to have like a total cost of ownership and be able to make sure that it can actually survive, do what it does for me today. And maybe the cost recovery happens, let's say, on one or two or three years, right? So what are some of those business imperatives? Again, these are not comprehensive enough, uh, just capturing a few, right? But customer experiences are changing, right? People demand what they want right now in a very consumable fashion, in a very easy, simplistic fashion, and in a very personalized fashion as well, right? So the experiences are really going, right, changing, right? The operational and cost efficiency is becoming very, very key for businesses, right? I mean, to s survive today, you've got to be very, very efficient in the way you're working, and you're going to be very, uh, I would say, in a very controlled manner, be able to take a risk, see if that risk pays off, and then go large at it, right? The other thing that we talk about in today's hyper-connected world is security, right? Now, again, you, we are in this uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, conference here today, right? But please take away that security is a foundational framework for everything that we build and do, right? The ability to make sure that uh, who gets what they want without, let's say, uh, with a lot of trust, right? Being able to enable those service for them is very, very important as part of the digital trust fabric, right? Uh, and I'll talk a little more. I'll talk a little more on this, right? Now, apart from that, you got a lot of innovation, right? Because you stay static, you'll die, right? You say you can't change, you will not survive, right? So the ability to constantly innovate, process, product, how can I do things better, how can I bring something new to the market out there is a question on every CEO out there, right? So they're trying to really see how does this, again, technology help them do that, right? So think of these as maybe four pillars. There's probably more, but just wanted to kind of uh, touch upon those that are major from my perspective. 
Now you take these imperatives, right? And you can associate different problems around it, right? So if you take, for example, the digital trust, right? Uh, there's a lot of cyber threat attacks that are happening today, right? People would like to, I mean, ransomware, right? DDoS attacks, right? And these days, these are not even individual driven, right? These are suddenly political country agendas today, right? Trying to kind of bring down economies, right? I think this threat is real and it will continue to be real. And whatever we do, right, in all of the platforms to inherently make it secure is going to be very, very key, right? If you look at identity access, uh, previously comp we used to have perimeters and firewalls and WAFs and all sorts of stuff, right? Uh, but then as you get into all zero trust, right? Identity becomes a key part of your perimeter, right? Your security perimeter, right? And then obviously we have to live with privacy issues as well, right? Data, where it gets stored, how long it gets stored, where can it go, where can it live, what is the life cycle of how long it can live, who will have access to it, who can modify it, which is my single source of truth, right? A lot of the privacy and data issues come in, right? Apart from that, when you look, look at process and product innovation, right? The things I already talked, legacy systems, slow to change, slow to adapt, slow to scale, right? Resilience, right? Uh, skills available, right? Sometimes become very siloed, right? As we build these technologies in which you have some verticals, right? Then skills become very vertical, right? Again, you're not really able to do like um, horizontally stuff, right? We talk of full stack engineers, right? Full stack developers, right? Trying to cut, or cut across things and do stuff, right? Uh, and which is probably more the need of the day rather than try to kind of have siloed stuff, right? So lack of agility, legacy system, siloed interaction, so on, right? Similarly, when we get to uh, customer experience, right? Uh, as I said, right, you need what you need immediately, right, in a customized fashion, right? Uh, if you look at all the apps that uh, you have on your phone, right, a lot of very customized experience. But at the same time, if you're looking at how do I get customer support, et cetera, right? People are doing contact centers in the cloud now. Right, you've got chatbots in the cloud now, right? So basically moving all of this into the cloud brings efficiencies and is also able to scale, right? Then operational and cost efficiency, right? What is my cost? As I said, right, one of the beautiful things of the cloud is it's paper use, you've got a lot of telemetry, you've got a lot of metrics that you get, you can bill exactly what you need, right? Again, with, with the guardrails that I talked about, right? Everything, right, you've got to make sure that you're using it in the right manner for the value that you derive in the context of your use case to make sure that you're getting it within the cost structure that you define. Otherwise, it's going to bloat, right? Uh, one of the things that we used to have previously, vendor lock-in, right? You get in somebody like an Oracle or a SAP or somebody, right? Very, very hard to get them out, right? And it's designed that way, right? It's designed with that stickiness in mind, right? So uh, it's it's very difficult and suddenly you're locked uh, and you're trying to figure out, hey, how do I now uh, change? How, how and, th and that itself is a big business by itself, <laughs> right? So this whole migration part from one one piece of software to another piece of software, right? Or even, let's say, versions of software, right? So there's a lot of aspects around vendor lock-in. But then if you do the cloud native, go to the cloud, right? It's, it's very easy, right? In some sense, to be able to swap out, right? And get to something new, because you could have, let's say, certain services continue to run. You bring up new services that let's say rely on different sets of technologies and then slowly get the other one out, right? So there's inherent efficiencies, inherent uh, advantages for you to go cloud native so that some of these you don't even see, right? I think once you are truly cloud native, you work in the cloud, right? Some of these problems may not even be problems to you, right? It could be a different set of problems you're grappling with, right? These, this I'm kind of giving you saying that, hey, here is why cloud native is inherently advantageous for you to go, right? Uh, I think that's probably, next slide please. Just gives you the gist of what I was trying to cover, right? And if you look at all of the cloud aspect, right, the cloud native that I just talked about, right, we are kind of getting all of these benefits inherently, right? Whether it's cost optimization, automation, right, I think fantastic with respect to being able to mimic use cases, right, getting scale, right, understanding if this works, where does your system break, right, at what point will you have challenges, 
right? And if I am breaking here, then how do I, let's say, alternatively uh, figure out what to do? Uh, what is my, let's say, DR plan, right? So there's a lot of things that you start getting, right, as you get into the cloud aspect, right? Similarly, right, analytics, right? Uh, previously, if we were struggling to figure out what's going on in which part of the system, why are things breaking down, what are my low water marks, what are my high water marks, uh, Analytics is a fantastic, fantastic, uh, and the cloud is enabled with that by design, right? You get extremely good analytics to understand what is going on out there, right? And then if you look at the whole aspect of platform, right? As I mentioned, it's now a lot more comprehensive platform for you to use, right? It's a much more comprehensive platform for you to use, and basically you can just build on top, right, and quickly realize the value. You don't have to do a lot of things by yourself. You don't, you don't have to write a lot of code yourself, right? It's very quickly you're able to spin up on top. Uh, there's lifecycle management available as well. You're only concerned about your applications, what it has to do, how it has to do, and get the business value out, right? So cloud native, in one sense, jump starts, right? If you're in a business, right, it kind of jump starts what you want to do, right? And then there's a constant plethora of tools, right, that are constantly coming at you to figure out how do I make little changes, how do I make little adjustments and reuse or use some of them, right, to figure and get better value than what I already have, right? If I, again, if I talk a little bit, right, in, the, in this context, right, uh, right, there's a lot of, I would say, things that we do, right? I mean, for example, I, I've done, uh, I'm part of uh, security, but then there's a lot of media stuff that I've done, right? And when we were doing, let's say, some content delivery, right, which was one of the projects, products I was doing, right, uh, we were figuring out how do I scale this to a lot of customers across the globe quickly, right? And then basically cloud native help, right, where we were able to very quickly spin up uh, containers, right, at different pops around the globe, right, for us to cater to different customers and scale it also, right? I mean, if certain uh, folks needed a certain stringent quality of service, right? We could provide that with a differentiated service, right? At each one of those global pops and deliver it fast, right? So it, the the whole concept of what we needed to do, what was the problem, uh, how do I need to address it, right? All happened, let's say, within about six months, right? Which would not be possible. Right, if you were thinking of this in a traditional way, right? I mean, six months itself seems long, but in the context of the problem that I just spoke about, I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of complexities, right? But it is pretty, pretty fast, right? Uh, next slide, please. Huh. So uh, if you look at where we are, again, specific in the context of India, right? Uh, there's a lot of government initiatives out there, digitization of our government departments, digitization of the technologies we use, right? Whether it is uh, National Health Scheme, whether it is uh, e-marketplace, right? Whether it's Aadhaar, right? There are, there's so many government initiatives that are currently happening, right? Cutting across and touching our lives, but all built in the cloud, right? Built cloud. Uh, with inherent security, right, with the ability to scale, right, with the ability to get you your services, right? Uh, so there's a lot of growing government initiatives, and this will only grow because this is not something that can stop, right? I think beyond, right, governments, right? I think this is something that will continue because once we've, it's touched the lives, it's touched how we end up operating, I think there'll just be continuous evolution to that, right? Uh, business digitization is no longer some buzzword, right? It is real, right? I mean, if you cannot do this, you cannot survive, right? You got to be able to touch every part of your business all the way from, let's say, supply, ch supply chain, whether it's finance, whether it's HR, whether it's marketing, whether it's engineering, right? Whether it's sales, right? It used to be a lot more metrics driven in sales in the past, right? But all of these functions, all of these supporting functions, right, has to be connected together in a digitized manner so that you have a very clear understanding of what is the workflow, Right? And where is the bottleneck? Right? Where is it getting stuck? What do I do differently? Right? So all of that aspect around digitization is real and it is happening. I mean, I, I don't think any company will survive without being able to digitize. Right? So there's a lot of business digitization. I mean, I'm talking of country digitization, right? Obviously, there's got to be business digitizations. And in all of this, right, as I mentioned, right, the startup ecosystem is booming and thriving, 
right? So if you read some of the numbers with respect to how many startups came in, in India in 2021 and 2022, right? It is staggering, right? There's about $8 billion of revenue, potential revenue, right? That we are talking about in 2023 and 2024, right? It's phenomenal, right? Thousands of startups have come on, right? Uh, and basically all of these are all cloud native. Right? They are born in the cloud, delivering services from the cloud, delivering at speed, delivering at velocity, right? and making a differentiation for themselves right? out there amongst their peers. Right? So as this happens, right, basically the aspect of cloud native will continue. Right? I think the momentum is there. Uh, there's further, inc uh, I haven't touched some of these, right? but there's further increasing investments in Edge and IoT and 5G. Right? So all of this is again transforming. Right? You're only getting faster speeds with 5G. You're getting a lot of, uh, um, I would say, in the manufacturing industry and maybe other industries, right? you're starting to see the value of IoT. Right? IoT was a buzzword 10 years ago. I think we are starting to see the uh, value out of that. Right? And Edge, right? it's not all going to be cloud native. This is also real, right? Because there are use cases where the cloud is slow, right? Where you've got to be able to make decisions, right? Uh, at the edge, right? For example, in a manufacturing industry, you've got to be able to quickly see an assembly line and see what's going on, and you probably need an edge out there that'll do intelligently something for you, right? So there are many different use cases that are coming. So the ability to coexist between the cloud and edge is also important, right? What you can do locally, you do it. Be able to, let's say, um, shift some intelligence that can wait, right, into the cloud, right? I think that is also there. And in all of this, again, data is important. Data is what drives everything today, right? The ability to see, inspect, make sure it is secure, right? And in the context of where it needs to live, reside, right? And, and in an intelligent fashion, interpret it, right? For us to then take actionable insights on it, right? So this is, again, a very key factor. Now, all of this, again, right, is kind of inherently part of the cloud native platforms that we have today. And it, it is all about us to actually use it in a nice fashion to then provide value to the customers. I think I'm done with that. So uh, just a bit, if all of you can scan this QR code, I think we have a short survey that Tata Communications is running across our customers and some of our potential customers saying, how ready are you for the cloud journey? Right. So if you've got this, please take a quick uh, snapshot. And uh, if you can, please take the survey. It will be useful for us uh, as we build our new platforms and solutions. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions? Any questions uh, before we close the keynote? What are the trends I'm seeing? In what context? So, as I mentioned, right, customers are demanding outcomes these days, right? So previously we used to go to customers with products, right? We used to say, I can solve your network problem or I could give you bandwidth, right? Or I could solve your security problem, etc. right? I think customers are kind of gone beyond that. They're looking at solutions and outcomes, right? Which is where this concept of platform is now becoming more important, right? Again, you can define platform in many contexts, right? But then what we are saying is, I will offer you a platform that is generic enough let's say, which will satisfy different customer segments, right? And Tata Communications also does that, right? And then we can, say, we can very quickly say, you know what? This platform then can be tweaked and customized for your specific outcome that you need, right? I think that is one that we are seeing, right? The other thing that we are seeing as people are, as we get into the 5G and the IoT and all that, right? The aspect of how quickly can you deliver that? And how quickly can you deliver it at a value and at a cost that is now appropriate, right? I think so that is also very, very clear, right? So how do I bring efficiencies into what I'm doing? Which is where, again, this platform concept, right, becomes relevant, that I don't have to do, uh, I don't have to react to every customer and do something specific for that customer, right? Which is where I think being able to build platforms. But again, while we build these platforms, we also get into a lot of integration stuff, right? Because you've got to kind of make sure things are managed, massaged, et cetera, and you still have single telemetry, right? Single views, right? So those again, right, I would say are part of the platform builds that companies are doing to try and realize value for the customers. Any, spe any specific product uh, you are seeing more? 
Uh, I, I think uh, given the fact that this is a keynote talk, I will not get into any specific products or companies here. Uh, good morning, Mr. Sharma. It was a beautiful presentation. Thank you for that. I have a quick question. I've been with the banking industry for quite some time, more than 15 years. You know how banking works. They've been running mainframe for quite a long time. <laughs> so what's your take on that? How do you guys approach a banking client on how to move the mainframe system into cloud native? Any tips and tricks? <laughs> I think Thank it you. is a, a interesting challenge, right? Uh, we've been successful partially, right? We've, I wouldn't say we've been successful fully there, right? Uh, but obviously with banks um, and then global banks at that, right? Uh, there's a lot of concern, right, about data. There's a lot of concern about privacy, right? Because there's a lot of life data, right, that is available there and how do we make sure it doesn't fall into the right or wrong hands, sorry. Uh, so there's, a, there's an inherent concern about that, right? But one of the things that we are doing is we, we are actually building financial clouds, right? So we are basically able to kind of say that uh, compared to, let's say, traditional workloads that would run, let's say, in public clouds or other private multi-tenanted clouds, right? We are basically telling uh, our customers saying that how we are building a lot more security, right? And then in that aspect, right, there's a lot of compliance, there's a lot of standards, right, that we have to adhere to. We are building all of that into the platform, right? We are building all of that into the platform, right? And uh, in a very selective manner, right? I think we are picking, let's say, very specific use cases and saying maybe this is something you can migrate, you can migrate, right? So it's a slow journey, right? But with the fintech sector coming, Right? Again, those are startups born in the cloud. You've seen banks that don't even have an <laughs> outlet anywhere, right? They're all in the cloud, right? So with fintechs coming up, right, I think the bigger guys are seeing that, yeah, this is no longer an option, right? This is now a necessity for me to do. Again, if you're looking at uh, customers and the scale and the speed at which they are demanding services from banks, you can't, you can't keep up, right, if you're in the traditional world, right? You've seen, right, everything you've seen, like HDFC Bank, et cetera, given RBI said mandates, right, to get your act together, right? So the things that are happening purely basis the needs of customers and the fact that competition is now coming. Right? So I think this is just a journey now. It's just a journey. It started. The ball is rolling. I don't think it can be unrolled. I think we'll go sign up. Thank you, Vishnu. All right. Thank you all. Have a great uh, event. Hope you, ha hope you find a lot of learning in this uh, event here. Thank you. Thank you. And also thank you so much for accommodating our last minute request. And uh, uh, we'd like to give you a small token of appreciation. Um, I request Sindhil to come and do the honors. Thank you, Vishnu. Thanks, Sindhil. And um, uh, you can get the QR code from the volunteers and organizers. So if you need it, so you can request us. Maybe we have a uh, um, good set of people. I think we, have, we are around 10 people around. So you can reach out to us.